Uh, I'm talking about uh, creating a tipping point for positive change in the community and in the region. And in that conversation, kind of the importance of collaboration, the importance of us to work with each other and, quite frankly, people that we've never met across Northeast Indiana to help affect uh, positive change in, in our region and here in Fort Wayne. Um, but I think it's important first to start, for me to start by kind of defining what, what tipping point, what is, what is a tipping point? What is the tipping point that we're reaching to achieve? Um, and to me, it's, uh, and I saw Lori Keyes before the meeting this morning, and I was, we were talking about setting the table, uh, which she's heard me say a lot. And uh, you know, it's about setting the table for private investment. It's about creating the environment here in Fort Wayne and in Northeast Indiana for positive change to happen. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, but I do think that there's a tremendous amount of uh, momentum that's being achieved in positioning us to, to reach that tipping point, to have the table set, if you will, uh, for the kind of change that we're working so hard to achieve here in Northeast Indiana. Um, but first, in, you know, kind of in our discussion about how we create that tipping point, I think it's important to understand that we can't assume that we're all on the same page. Uh, what is the desired future that we're working to, to uh, achieve. Um, and so even, you know, as you sit here this morning, I don't know that you've had a conversation with the people sitting next to you or the people sitting in front or in back of you about what your shared goals for the future are. Um, I think all of us have ideas, um, but the process of going through uh, the, the definition of a vision for the future, for example, is a very challenging task, but one that's critically important to our ability to advance our community and advance our region. So the power of a shared vision is critically important. Um, we cannot assume that we all are striving for the same thing, and so there's a lot of things that we may individually try and achieve and go off in different directions, but at the end of the day, at the end of five years, 10 years, if we were to look back and look at the collective impact of all those disjointed things, did we really move the ball down the field? And you can argue many times, I would argue in looking back at the history of our community, that we did not. Um, and so I don't, I don't know if Heather Shegler's here yet this morning. I know she's on the program today, but she worked with us uh, very closely in Vision 2020 to create some visuals that we used early on in the process uh, to, to help people understand the importance of engaging in this discussion with Vision 2020. And one of the visuals was this one that just kind of shows arrows going every direction, that whether you're with in education or with foundations or in business or in government, there's a lot of good things going on. Uh, but few of them are aligned. So the power of a shared vision creates a vehicle for us to align our efforts. And guess what? Without even one more dollar in many cases, we can do more because we're doing a better job of aligning scarce resources uh, to, to achieve those shared goals. And Mac talked about Vision 2020, and he has some handouts for you uh, related to the big goal. But I also wanted to, to touch on Two, there were seven major priorities uh, that were identified late last year coming out of the process of Vision 2020. There will be new priorities that will be identified as that process continues. Uh, but one of them was the big goal, as Mac mentioned, and that is that by the year 2025, 60% of our adult population in the region will either have an advanced degree, an associate degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a, uh, I think if they say a quality certification, but a certification that that uh, uh, says that you have a specific skill that you've been trained in and that, and that certification is transferable, that you, you now have that knowledge and, and you can go and work in a number of different places and apply it. Uh, presently, I think we're at around 30% of the adult population. So you, that's a big, bold, outrageous goal, okay? Um, and then also I, I wanna focus on the, the, the priority that was identified uh, related to uh, riverfront development in downtown Fort Wayne. Um, I think everyone here should understand the historic significance <laughs> of a 10 county region, our 10 county region, that doesn't have a strong history of collaboration, coming to the conclusion that riverfront development in downtown Fort Wayne is important to the future economic strength of our region. So whether you're in the mayor of Angola or uh, county commissioner in Huntington County, there was consensus around that priority as the number one quality of life uh, objective that we wanted to focus on in the near term in Northeast Indiana. Huge, huge accomplishment. 
So okay, so we have a vision. We have Vision uh, 2020. It sets out a number of things, and as I said, uh, seven priorities, two of which I'll focus on today. But you also, the second thing we, we have to focus on is the development of a plan to execute the vision. I mean, you can have all the great ideas in the world, uh, but if you don't have a plan that really digs into the weeds to help you understand what steps you need to undertake to accomplish the vision, uh, you'll never get there. Uh, so you always, you know, we always uh, talk about plans that sit on shelves or whatever, but you know, you know, I would argue that it's not a failure of planning, it was a failure of implementation. Um, and so we need to be as committed when we uh, begin into a visioning process, begin into a, van, uh, a planning process, that we're also committing to the implementation of the plans that we develop. So kind of setting a path to achieve the vision that you set out. Uh, with respect to the big goal, again, uh, big, bold, you know, how do we get from 30% to 60% by the year 2025? Uh, this last week, um, the regional partnership engaged a group called Strive out of Cincinnati to lead a two-day, uh, very intensive uh, uh, retreat uh, over in Columbia City where more than 120 business, education, foundation uh, leaders from across Northeast Indiana came together to go through a very intensive two-day process to lay out very specific milestones, very specific expectations, very specific plans for measuring progress. Um, and and uh, I was there at the beginning. I came back at the end to hear the, the, the uh, report out that they provided, uh, kind of defining that path forward to achieve the big goal. It's very exciting. There has never been a meeting in Northeast Indiana where that group of people have come together to focus around a shared goal like that for how we want to advance educational attainment in our region because it is critical, as Max said, that we focus on, really ratchet up our efforts to focus on talent development in Northeast Indiana to ensure that our region is more competitive than any, any other region in the world in attracting and retaining good talent. Uh, with respect to the riverfront, again, um, you know, for the 10 county region to come together and identify that as the number one quality of life uh, project that we want to focus on is critical, but how do we achieve that? And uh, while the legacy recommendations are still being uh, concluded in terms of the, the ideas that will be ultimately presented to the mayor in probably mid-June, I would be shocked if there's not a recommendation to develop, again, a detailed plan for the riverfront corridor, the river corridor here in downtown Fort Wayne so that we can begin to understand the areas where we can develop, the areas that we have to protect, the uh, hyd hydrology and so on that we have to pay attention to. But again, to set out a very specific path for achieving that vision of redeveloping the riverfront in Fort Wayne. Um, and I will tell you that uh, I, you know, there would be a recommendation that again, that we not only do the plan, but that we allocate some resources to implement the plan when it's completed. So I think you're good. To me, you know, the time has come, and that is a very, very bold um, investment for our community to be making uh, to position ourselves for the future. Um, and then third, um, have a plan, uh, the importance of collaborative leadership. Uh, John Sampson, in our work throughout Northeast Indiana, John is the president of the Northeast Indiana Regional Partnership, um, he talks about collaboration as an unnatural act between consenting adults. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and that's, I think, a really great way to describe it. Um, and that, that uh, challenge is even co more compounded when, when you're looking at the 10 county region. Because at least here in Fort Wayne, we have a mayor, we have a jurisdiction, we pay taxes here, we have a vested interest. But when you look at the region, there is no municipality of Northeast Indiana, there is no mayor of Northeast Indiana, there is no council of Northeast Indiana. So it takes a different commitment to collaboration across uh, municipal and county boundaries to achieve these, these shared goals. Um, and with respect to the riverfront development issue, I just want to share with you a conversation, I think as the region has identified riverfront development in downtown Fort Wayne as the number one regional priority. Um, I don't know if any of you have met David Floyd, who is the uh, president of an organization called OrthoWorks in, in Warsaw. But they've created a not-for-profit that's focused on what they need to do in Warsaw to ensure that they have the community, looking at education, quality of life, et cetera, that will continue to support the growth and investment of Zimmer and DePue and Biomed 
and the other orthopedic manufacturing companies in Warsaw, which are, which they have a global presence there. Uh, but David said that riverfront development in downtown Fort Wayne is critical to OrthoWorks' efforts to retain and attract the talent that they need from throughout the world uh, in Warsaw to continue to lead those companies into the future. So fast forward to where we have the plan completed and we're going to city council for approval of some component of the investment that will be required to implement the plan. And I will tell you that we will have David Floyd at the council table. We will have the mayor of uh, Angola at the council table because today we positioned ourselves through the collaboration that's been achieved in our region uh, to have that possible and to have David Floyd, former head of Depew in, in Warsaw now with, with OrthoWorks standing in a public hearing in Fort Wayne talking about the critical importance of our riverfront development to their ability to attract and retain talent in Warsaw is an historic moment. Okay, that is just so huge. Um, the next thing I think we need and I can speak to this having gone through the Harrison Square project, uh, is a patient sense of urgency. <laughs> okay. You know, I, all of us involved in Vision 2020, and I hope all of you have seen the uh, per capita income decline that we've experienced as a region, that we're at 80% of the U.S. average per capita <coughs> income today. Uh, and Mike Packnett, who's, who's led the Vision 2020 effort, says, you know, when will we have a sense of urgency? Is 80% bad enough? Is 75? When we get to 60, maybe we'll start to do some things. Um, and so I get impatient, I know, but I know also that you know nothing, none of these bold ideas that we're talking about are easy to do. You know, I remember at one point in the Harrison Square project where we had one of our first public <coughs> meetings, and I was, you know, passionately committed to achieving this project. And there was an individual there who walked up to me after the meeting and says, I'm going to do everything I can to stop this project. And he, and he tried, believe me. Over the course of a couple of years, um, he, he was relentless um, in terms of not only what he could do in terms of a FOIA requests and kind of gumming up the legal department at the city to personal attacks and so on. He would stop at nothing. And so you need to be prepared for that. You have to have some patience in kind of staying focused on that goal and, and working forward and be well prepared. Um, at the conclusion of that project, it was probably a year later after the ballpark was open, uh, there was a person who was one of the opponents, not the same person, but uh, he commented to me one time, he said, you know, one of the things that frustrated me most about that whole process, and I said, what? what? And he said, you were always so well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, and I said, well, you know why? And he said, no. I said, because we always expected that you would be, <laughs> you know, and they never were, not, not as well prepared. Um, and so be well prepared in executing your plan. The final thing I just want to say to each of you, um, and it's really as you take kind of looking at the need for a regional vision and, and the need for a plan to implement the various components of it, you know, how do you get that down to, the, to a personal level? And you know, I just want to challenge all of you to, to find your voice. That's, that's kind of a personal way of looking at how, how can you individually impact some of these things. I think particularly the young men here sitting in the front row. You know, I just want to encourage you, never be afraid to speak up and say what you're thinking. Um, I know in meetings that I'm in, uh, oftentimes you know, there's always people that are quiet. There's people that always are the first to speak. Um, but I always find that the folks that are generally more quiet and don't always speak up first are probably the ones that have the best comments to offer. Uh, they tend to be a little more thoughtful maybe, not you know, thinking about how they would frame their remarks before they just blurt it out. But you know, find your voice, because we need leadership at all levels to advance the things that we're trying to achieve. Uh, and so whether you're comfortable going to a public hearing and speaking, or you're comfortable, walk up to the mayor and tell him you either agree or disagree. It doesn't have to be, go mayor, do what you're doing. It may be mayor. <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> you know, but take the time to do that. I can tell you, I know I would greatly appreciate I know Mayor Henry would greatly appreciate those kinds of inputs. Uh, in helping us to achieve the kinds of things that we're trying to achieve in the region. So, so speak out, um, engage, you know, if there's an opportunity for you to provide direct service, but look for those opportunities and challenge yourself. Challenge yourself.
to, to uh, find your voice and help us set the table. So thanks very much for the opportunity.